switching uh, on and off a lot. Uh, you don't want to reflect back into the battery pack this noise. And so there'll be input capacitors on the input to the controllers. Um, the Kelly controllers had gotten a bad name uh, on exactly this same issue, but all controllers pretty much suffer from it. The solution is to put a, um, oh, a pretty good size uh, resistor. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, large, two or 300 ohms, though, anyway, on a 150 volt system. If something like ours, 375 volts, we'll probably use a, a 1K uh, power resistor across the terminals of your contactor. Now, that applies a current. Um, if we use a 1K, that'll be about a third of an amp to the controller all the time. If you open the contactor, um, it's going to remove any significant amount of current flow and stop the car. Uh, but you'll still be able to get a, a third of an amp or so uh, through what's called a pre-charge resistor. So if you hook this up, and, um, and you hook it to your battery pack with the contactors open, it immediately starts filling those capacitors. And by the time you could get around and, and start the car, pretty much, um, they're going to be at the same voltage level. If the, if the input capacitors are at the same voltage level as your pack voltage, uh, there's no big in surge of current. I never heard of this on a DC to DC converter. It makes sense in a way, but most of them don't have a big capacitors on the input. They'll have some little electrolytics that are high voltage, but fairly trivial. They're just uh, spike shunts, um, and um, they'd be very difficult to uh, develop much of a surge current. This has uh, some pretty good sizable um, input capacitors. That's, that's not all bad. Um, and, and they are protected by s some fast-acting fuses, uh, what look like pretty expensive fuses that I can't get. And what he is talking about here is that uh, he meant for you to connect it um, on the uh, controller side of the contactor where it would get the uh, uh, effect of the pre-charge. Now, we may or may not want to do that, but it's no problem. Uh, we can connect... Um, to this from the pack through a separate contactor and pre-charge resistor, it wouldn't be a big event. Uh, and in fact, I'm coming more and more to believe you need to be able to switch on and off these DC to DC converters. Um, you can't just leave them on all the time. So we, we would arrange something like that. It's not a huge fault. Uh, it's unusual in a DC to DC converter but you need to be aware that this one, you can blow up a $3,200 DC to DC converter um, with this uh, function. I certainly think they ought to make it more clear in the book, um, but more to the point, they ought to design the thing where this isn't a problem. Um, but it is kind of an external event. When you hook up power to it, it's supposed to make power, but the inrush current on this DC to DC converter is sizable. This is a very impressive unit in size. Um, looking inside of it, it's a little older technology. Uh, I think this has been around for a while. It's not a, a brand new type thing, but it's a very sturdy um, unit that can put out a very impressive amount of um, DC to DC um, power and, and with high efficiency. Undoubtedly, it's a good unit. I don't really want to pay $3,200 for a DC to DC converter for a car to run the cigarette lighter and a radio. Surely there must be something else we can do. All right, so let's talk a little bit. I've kind of made a mess of our bench top here, but I want to open everything up. We're about to, we've tried them on the car. It works pretty well. In fact, it works quite well. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what I've actually cobbled together here. Uh, these are sort of homemade DC to DC converters, but not really. There's not a lot of electronic design involved here. I don't want you to be afraid of this because it's 
really wiring up terminals and switches and so forth. I told you that I kind of like these Vicor modules. The king of DC to DC converters is Vicor Corporation, and they have made such a stunning array of these little brick DC to DC converters that I'm a little bit in awe of it. The problem is they're pretty high end. They work real well. This is a V300A 12C500AL from Vicor Corporation. It's kind of an older model, but really solid. This thing is 584.8 watts in at 300 volts and 12 volts, 500 watts out all by itself. You've got a uh, kind of a negative and a positive input and a negative and positive output, and this is nominally 300 volts. It actually run in a range from 180 to 380, um, and so it's a pretty wide input range and maintains a very stable uh, 12 volt output across that whole range. And I've tested the range, it really doesn't. Uh, um, in fact, I think their published values may be a little less than that, but I've tested them from 180 to 375. You get full current and full voltage out of them, nominally 12 volts. The, uh, these things cost about $275 a piece. Three of them would be 1,500 watts, almost what our Brusa is, and so that's about uh, $850 total for the bricks that will do essentially the same job that this $3,200 device will do. That's not the entire story. They're kind of uh, hard to find in the normal range for electric vehicles, but for this 300 volt range, they're common as hen's teeth. They use them on mainframe computers to convert 300 volts, basically um, a bridge rectified uh, 240 volt AC gets you about between 300 and 310 volts. And they take these things and convert it to 12 volts for mainframe computers. This is like your 12 volt supply in your PC, uh, except this one's 500 watts by itself. And they'll make um, a box with uh, 20 of these things in it uh, to run some of these large computer systems. Mainframes have fallen somewhat out of favor. So guys are buying them, are wrecking them, and selling off the components. I got these on eBay for 20 bucks a piece. They're a little more expensive for the uh, 200 volt version or the 150 volt version that might actually be useful. But these 300 volt versions are going cheap. Uh, I, in fact, I think I got a box of 10 of them for $200. Um, they're fantastic DC to DC converters. Total isolation, like 5,000 volts of isolation. Um, so your input and your output are never connected. And the voltage on the output is um, somewhat adjustable. You adjust them, uh, not really with a pot or anything, but by a trim resistor. You actually have five output pins, your plus and minus 12 volts, and your plus and minus sense pin. These sense pins have to be basically wired to the plus and minus output. They're there so you could run it 50 feet and get your uh, voltage sense there and it'll regulate to that point instead of on your uh, um, output pin that has a current load. And so that's a neat feature that we don't care about, but the result is you have to tie your um, sense or your S pin, your negative sense, to the negative terminal, positive sense to the positive terminal. There's also an SC uh, pin, and you can actually change the voltage, the 12 volts, up and down uh, by about 10% on these particular bricks using a trim resistor. And this trim resistor concept is uh, ubiquitous in the Vicor line. Almost all their products have this. They actually have a calculator online at um, their website, uh, which is uh, inexplicably vicr.com. 
but um, that will actually give you the resistance values. The formula comes on the data sheet for the module, and these data sheets are commonly available on their website. If you get one of these, look up the part number and uh, um, get the data sheet on it. It's um, probably not for everybody to read that stuff. I like reading them, <laughs> but I've been doing it for a very long time. The, um, the resistor value that we used in this case is um, a 90 um, kilo ohm resistor, which costs a penny. Um, and uh, we wire that from the uh, SC pin to the uh, positive sense pin. And what that does is bump uh, the voltage up to about 13.2 volt. Actually, I've got these um, 